Hey there folks, welcome to Spectrum Pulse. We talk about music, movies, art, and culture. And today's the one you've all been waiting for, the new album from Foster the People, titled Supermodel. Now, if you were around me and talked to me about music in 2011, you probably heard me drop into a rant at some point about Foster the People and their big hit single, Pumped Up Kicks. Hell, I even reviewed their debut album back when I wrote, still wrote my reviews on Facebook. And while I'm not exactly proud of that review by any stretch, I remember the seething hatred I had for this band and everything they stood for. And looking back upon this band two and a half years later and after a re-listen to that debut album, I can say this. There's worse albums. Honestly, while I still don't like Pumped Up Kicks for its terrible framing, its insincere posturing, and Mark Foster's awful falsetto, that song, it's not worth the number three spot I gave it on my year-end list of the top 10 worst hit songs of 2011. Hell, looking back on Torches as an album, it's very much of its time. A perfectly primed dose of indie pop rock that could have only ever gotten airplay in 2011, thanks to the wispy production, the whistling, and the slowly growing acceptance of that particular brand of indie music. Now, that's not saying that Torches is a good album. It's really so painfully mediocre that it really hurts, mostly due to an overstuffed upper range and synth line, a lack of good guitar melody when you can hear the guitars at all, an over-reliance on percussion and not very interesting percussion at that, not very solid melody lines, Mark Foster's god-awful vocals, and lyrics that were trying way too hard to be self-aware and wink at the camera. In my opinion, the worst part of the album. I've heard people make the argument that Torches was parodying and criticizing the would-be hipsters that would have embraced it, but you know what? I don't buy that. Half because the instance sincerity was way too smug, half because the lyrics weren't nearly smart or well-framed enough to justify it, and half because, unlike acts like the Beastie Boys or Kesha, they forgot to make the music actually fun for those who didn't get the joke. Instead of working on multiple levels, Torches by Foster the People just didn't work at all, only leaving us hell on a beats as obviously the best song of that album. But what proved a lot more disturbing for me was how successful and influential Foster the People ended up turning out to be, especially in the commercially viable indie pop rock scene that have exploded over the past few years. I can trace the musical and popular lineage of bands like The Neighborhood, Bastille, Young the Giant, and even acts like Imagine Dragons, a band I actually like, to the success of Foster the People. They ended up sparking a mainstream explosion of percussion-driven, reverb-swollen, mixed overstuffed indie electronic rock records, which is actually kind of hilariously ironic because it meant that if Foster the People really were going for parodic intent, nobody got the joke, especially not the music industry. And thus, I shouldn't exactly be surprised that Foster the People are back yet again with Supermodel, this time with a little bit more ambition and a bigger target in mind, this time being consumer capitalism. I gotta be honest, I prepared for the absolute worst here. What did I get? Ugh. This is gonna be frustrating. And not because that this album is bad. Indeed, Supermodel by Foster the People, in my opinion, is markedly better than Torches. But man, it's a mess that I certainly isn't that much worth defending. Indeed, I have a really hard time calling this album remotely close to good, especially considering the huge, gaping issues I have with this record. But then again, at the same time, there are more than enough moments on this album that make me feel that I should really like this band a lot more than I do. So in other words, I'm really caught in between here. So okay, where are these feelings coming from? Well, for one, even though this album is very much a mess, it wears its influences very proudly and the band still does have a knack for a catchy hook, an excuse that gets used to explain a lot of people's affection for that first album. Hell, Coming of Age feels distressingly like a day and age era song from the Killers, and the opening track Are You What You Wanna Be feels like it was lifted directly from Contra era Vampire Weekend. And across the back half of this record, it offers her a venture into psychedelic rock of all things that reminds me more than a little of a poor man's The Flaming Lips, or maybe MGMT if they forgot how to write good melodies. And that's not even considering Best Friend, which feels like a modernized version of the most grating elements of disco-inspired late 70s pop with only the solid bass line making up for the obnoxious vocals and the transparently phony upbeat tone that just got more exasperatingly irritating than anything else. Now, let me stress, there are moments when the instrumentation does work for me, and it does work here a lot better than it does on the previous album. A Beginner's Guide to Destroying the Moon has some explosive sizzle balanced well by a good piano chorus that I did like. The Truth approaches an operatic scope 
against a pseudo James Blake post dubstep undercurrent, which was interesting at least. And well, white guy with acoustic guitar songs always tend to get on my nerves. Fire Escape, it offers a bit of stripped down minimalism. That's, it's a really good contrast for the rest of the album. But you know what? I don't think that makes up for the overstuffed mixes, particularly up in the upper range. The bizarre choices in vocal effects and backing choruses, the sludgy, formless nature of most of the songs, and moments of grandiosity that may supposed to make these songs sound big and epic that just continuously fall flat in their face every single time. What's immediately apparent is that none of the songs on this album feel remotely cohesive as an album whole, which makes all the experience experimentation feel more than a little unfocused and not exactly close to original or striking, particularly when the influences are so plainly obvious. And this means that none of this comes close to giving Foss the people a distinctive instrumental identity of their own, which is kind of a step backwards from Torches because as much as I didn't like the sound there, it was unique to them, at least to some extent. So maybe the cohesion is in the lyrics then. And you know what? Mark Foster wasn't lying because this album does work to exploit the transparent phoniness that tends to crop up in modern consumer culture. And indeed, we get all manner of pointed yet very thuddingly obvious songs with some criticism on, like, Ask Yourself or Tabloid Super Junkie and the Are You What You Want to Be, which seems to be trying to play to the role of both introspective questioning and an inquiry of the audience. Unfortunately, despite some admittedly clever wordplay and decent technical songwriting, this album really isn't that focused on the social commentary so much as airing out some of the bitterness in existing relationships, whether it be with friends on Best Friend or on exes and Pseudologia Fantastica or Nevermind. And what's more telling is that Foss of the People's more negative focus never really manages to create much of an alternative beyond vague platitudes of just learning how to lose control in A Beginner's Guide to Destroying the Moon, or, or just finding all you need is love in the truth. I'll repeat back what I said when I reviewed Pure Heroin by Lord, that this, that sort of criticism holds a little less weight without a larger, potent replacement behind it. And with Foss the People, it gets even worse. And this comes back to a problem that I've had with Foss the People since the very beginning. I rarely ever by any sort of sincerity or their framing. Now the first is mostly an issue with Mark Foster's falsetto, which I've never ever liked and reaches all new levels of screechy annoyance on this album. And you know what the infuriating thing is? The, the frustrating thing is that he actually sounds pretty damn good in his lower range, which comes up a couple times in this album. So why does he feel the need to jump into a falsetto that only seems capable of conveying the emotion of just smug, mocking condescension? And that leads to the framing issue. Whenever Foster the people are criticizing consumerism, it's framed as though they're, they're outsiders, that they're not part of the system to man or they're not really of even the movements that are battling against consumerism now to be fair, I get the feeling that Fossil people are aware of this. The opening track has the lyric, I'm afraid of saying too much and ending up a martyr, but even more so I'm afraid to face God and say I was a coward. And taking a step further, the album has Fire Escape, the one track that actually does sound sincere as Fossil the People reflects on that just watching and being disaffected and not taking a side, that's not gonna inspire change in anybody. And that shows the level of nuance that easily makes it my favorite track on this album and probably the best song Fossil the People ever written. But that doesn't change the tracks where it feels like Foster the People is making that sort of sly commentary from the sidelines and the sidelines only, and never actually putting any of their own skin into the game. And when they do this, they kill any sense of populism that they might have. And thus, as much as I might agree with some of the broad sentiments that they are discussing and bringing to the table, I never get sucked into it like I do with other acts that are looking to make social commentary. Say what you want about Green Day or MIA for how incredibly broad their message is, you can at least buy into the act that they're selling. With Foss the People, they they just sound so disaffected and just so sly commenting from the sidelines that you never buy they believe what they're selling. And on top of that, the winking insincerity, it's a really sour fit for psychedelic rock as a whole, which is too flabby and overstuffed on that note to really resonate with me. Even when MGMT co-opted psychedelia for their darker themes, they at least tried to make it convincing and at least they had decent melody lines to go along with it. I'll be honest, the second I finished listening to Supermodel, I went back and put on Temple's album Sun Structures and I was amazed how much tighter and how much more melody driven the songs were and on top of that the lyrics were a hell of a lot better so as i said 
I gotta be honest, I'm really frustrated with this record because I can't objectively call it bad. It's definitely messy, sour, more than a little derivative, and not exactly compelling on an emotional or intellectual level. But at the same time, you can tell that there was effort and experimentation here, and at least designs on making a more ambitious album that could have potentially worked. And on that note, I don't really consider this record a failure. Sure, the points that they're being, that they're trying to make, they're broad and they're presented poorly, but they do manage to shakily stick the landing. And there are attempts at nuance that I do respect and appreciate. So, you know what? I'm gonna go halfway here. I'm gonna give this album a five out of 10 and a very cautious recommendation. I cannot say that Supermodel by Foster the People works even halfway, but you know what? It's an interesting listen all the same, even if you're left feeling a little underwhelmed at the end like I was. So yeah, if you'd like to, thanks a lot for watching. If you'd like to like and subscribe, I'd be more than grateful. If there's anything I might be able to do to improve my presentation, or if there's anything that any other albums coming out in recent weeks that you'd like me to take a look at, I'd be more than happy to take a listen. So until then, I'm Mark, and I'll see you next time.